going on everybody? We're doing something a little bit different today. Today I want to talk about tech cards. I've talked about tech cards a lot on the channel previously, but today we're going to kind of talk about them more in depth. Uh, mainly, I kind of tried my hand at redesigning some of the tech cards. Um, before we get into all that, let's lay down some ground rules and caveats. A, this is all completely for fun. I'm not saying my designs are better than what's in the game or that that's what should be put in the game. I'm just tossing out some ideas to kind of show you guys where my mental wavelength is on some of these cards. Um, number two, I spitballed a lot of these. Um, there's probably better ways for the designers to go about this. They are much better at this than I am. Um, number three, not every card on this list necessarily needs a change. I just wanted to kind of toss out tech cards as a whole. Um, and number four, why am I talking about this? Um, there's been kind of increasing chatter. I know I've been talking about it for a while, but I think the community as a whole is kind of talking about it more and more in terms of how tech cards fit into Marvel Snap. Um, it's kind of turning into the situation where basically every deck is just jamming in a ton of tech cards, and that's because most of them are completely fine to play. There's really no downside, no like massive tempo loss. Really, like, Sandman was the one that used to be a massive tempo loss. He got a pretty big buff recently. But, like, Killmonger, 3 energy, 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. Um, Shang-Chi, 4-3, a little bit on the slow side, but, you know, still pretty fine. Arrow, quite fine on curve. Like, most of the tech cards, you don't really take that much of a hit by running them. And, furthermore, a lot of the win conditions in Marvel Snap are, like, two-card combos. So you can run your two-card combo, your three-card combo, your four-card combo, and then you're going to run between two and four kind of filler cards, cards that are decent but really not integral into how you win the game, and then you're going to run two to four tech cards. And every deck just has room for them because most decks just have such small win conditions. Deck sizes are so small. Um, I just think it feels a little weird that so many of these tech cards are being run all over the place. Um, and I understand that if these tech cards were to be addressed and or changed, you'd have to change the card library as a whole. Like, for example, if you were to nerf Shang-Chi, things like Shuri would be, like, just bonkers or potentially Lockjaw. Um, so I understand that you can't just go make these changes I'm talking about without changing the rest of the cards, and thus they are much more unlikely to happen. Um, but I just wanted to kind of bring some attention to... Um, just kind of a interesting, different, weird part of Marvel Snap, uh, being that tech cards are just so integral into every single deck, and gameplay kind of winds up being, does the tech cards I run counter your win condition, and did I draw my win condition, instead of just, how does my deck interact with yours? And then I also understand that it's difficult to in, uh, introduce interactivity into a game like this, especially with the simultaneous turns. Um, so tech cards are definitely tough to pull off, um, but I just feel like I'd rather see either if they're going to be unconditional tech cards, them to be fairly weaker, or if you want powerful tech cards, add conditions to them. I think things like, and these aren't tech cards, but they're cards as a whole, uh, things like Stature and Miles Morales are kind of perfect examples of what I'm talking about. They are kind of way above the power curve, but I, each one requires a specific condition to be met in order to be played. Um, and I think that's kind of the direction I'd like to see some tech cards go in and kind of play into some thematics as well. Um, that was very long-winded. Um, I just want to kind of lay down the, uh, preface to what we're going to go over today. Uh, so let's start looking at some of these cards that I built here. Uh, first one we've got is Arrow. Um, Arrow is an interesting card because I think Arrow would be played even at a 5-0. like zero. That's how good she is. Um, so I, I tossed in a couple of ideas for Arrow. I think there's so many different directions you could go into. Um, I even think you could make her a 5-0. I think you could give her like the magic treatment of can't be played after turn 5. But I've also been on the record of I don't want can't be played after turn 5 to become a balancing tool in this game. I think if that comes up too often, it's a sign that there's probably a bigger problem with the card. Um, and Arrow does a lot of the similar things that Magic did, where Magic surprise extended the game, whereas Arrow is kind of surprise ending the game, because most of the time she's played on turn 6. But regardless, uh, the first option we tossed out here was to have her move the first card your opponent played this turn. So against things like Shuri, Arrow would still be a very, very strong card. 
um, because they wouldn't be able to do like Taskmaster. Even if they tried to mix in a one drop, if you played the one drop first, Taskmaster is going to copy the one drop. So I think that would still make Arrow almost as good as she is now. Just slightly more opportunity to play around her in other decks that are playing multiple cards on turn six. And another option for Arrow. I don't like this stipulation as much, um, but make it so if you are winning this location, move all cards your opponent played to this location. Um, it makes the card a, a lot more awkward. Um, you'd have to be winning big enough to kind of eat it or winning all three lanes. Um, it would definitely be putting a cap on her power level. Uh, Arrow was one that I had a tough time kind of thinking of what felt good about to really work on. Like I said, I don't like the can't be played after turn five stipulation. Um, but yeah, that's what we got for Arrow. I'd like to think of some other condition for her or some other ability of like move your opponent's cards one location to the right or one location to the left, maybe. I don't know. Um, but Arrow is definitely the strongest card in Marvel Snap right now. Next up, we've got Cosmo. I've got a couple options for him. Um, first one we got is your opponent's unreal cards cost one more with a max of six. I considered making it two more, but that just felt kind of too oppressive because at least current Cosmo, you can play unreal cards for their stats even if you lose the ability. Um, Cosmo here would be, and these are all ongoings. I didn't bother putting like ongoing and unreal on a lot of these cards just because it took up like more tech space than I wanted it to when I was making these custom cards. So Cosmo here would be an ongoing card. And you'd still be able to activate all of your unreal abilities, just your combos would get disrupted a little bit because all of your cards now cost one more. Um, that's less of a condition and more of like a hard stop. Like, Cosmo right now is just a complete hard stop on a location, whereas this still allows you to kind of play into your deck um, if you need to. Another option for Cosmo would be kind of a hard stop but a one-time. Or it could even be this turn. It doesn't have to be the next. It could be the next on reveal, or it could be this turn. Uh, but have Cosmo be like a, I'm just shutting down either the next or everything that happens this turn. Next turn, things go back to normal. Uh, having a 3-3, which is completely fine on curve, just be able to shut down all abilities for the rest of the game in a location, just seems very, very odd to me. And I, I think we're seeing that more. Next up we've got Enchantress, and I wanted to start by saying Enchantress, I think, out of all of the tech cards, is the one that needs to be touched the least in my opinion, but also that might just be because, similarly to um, Killmonger just holding all one cause Z-Dex in line, Enchantress might just be the reason why we don't see more ongoing decks, um, but I don't think that's completely the case. Uh, but either way, I added just a stipulation to Enchantress's um, base card. So her ability stat cost also remains the same. Um, but I added a, basically, Enchantress will lose two power herself for each enemy card affected by her ability. So you hit one enemy card, she becomes a 4-2. You hit two, she's a 4-0. All the way up to potentially a 4, negative 4, if you wipe out an entire lane of unreveals. Um... I just feel like tech cards need to have some sort of downside, and if it's not going to be... Because you also could make the case, and you could make the case for Cosmo as well, like these are options for balancing them. You can make Cosmo a 3-0, you can make Enchantress a 4-0, um, and they'll probably still be fine with their abilities in place as it is. I just feel like when you make the downside in that way, where you're just making the stats almost nothing in exchange for the ability and having the super powerful ability, it just creates even more of these massive swings one way or the other when I think there's a lot of gray area to be explored in Marvel Snap. Like, we'll talk about Killmonger in a minute, but, like, Cosmo, there's a lot of room between shut down nothing and shut down everything. There's a lot of space to explore in the middle where we could shut down things sometimes or shut down on reveals from cards that cost four or more. Like, there's so much design space in the middle, I don't think we need to be dealing in such absolutes all the time that create these massive blowouts in either direction in these games. Uh, same with Enchantress, a 4-0, that's a piece of garbage or it's gonna completely destroy your opponent. Why not play something that could be in between that's kind of like okay-ish and the more value you get out of it, the more price you're paying. Um, 
So that's the first option we had for enchanters. I think I had one more. I'm not sure. No, we had Killmonger. Um, so Killmonger, I think, is the one that I like the most out of my redesigns. Um, so this is going to reduce all one cost cards power by this card's power. You could potentially even make him a 3-2, but I wanted to start conservatively. And 3-1 may seem kind of useless. You'd be like, why would you ever play this card if you're going to reduce all one cost cards by one? First of all, I think Killmonger is way too good. It just completely deletes archetypes from the game. Nobody gets to really play Zoo once Killmonger comes into the picture. And I think there's a reason why Sunspot is basically the only one drop that sees play in the game right now. Um, and also, you look at Electra, she's a 1-1 that destroys 1-1 one, one drop. Killmonger costs two more, still stays on curve with the stats, and destroys everything. I don't think that should really be the case. So, the reduce the power thing, the reason why I went that route was it still affects everything, but also Killmonger would then synergize with the Wakandan cards. So, your cards like Black Panther right now is supposed to synergize with Shuri, Okoye, and Nakia. Killmonger would then do the same, but in reverse. So Black Panther gains additional stats. Obviously, he's doubling, so the more you can buff him up, the better. Same with, like, Shuri. Killmonger, then, the more you buff him up, the greater his kind of board wipe can wind up being. So right now, as a base, he's a 3-1 that reduces all one-cost power by one. That's not that great, but you play a Nakia on him, or you play with a Shuri, or you get an Okoye on him beforehand, and all of a sudden, he's reducing all one-cost power by, you know... Two, three, four, five, and then you're leaving a bunch of negative power on the board also which fills up deck slots so it kinds of winds up still being a very powerful tech card but it's a very powerful tech card that you need to build into to get the maximum benefit rather than I'm just gonna slap a killmonger in my deck and if you play sunspot I'm gonna kill your six power sunspot for free without really losing much tempo if you play zoo I instantly win the game if you're playing Thanos with the stones depending on how the game goes I can one card counter the best deck in the game not always it depends on how the game plays out but it just that does not feel right to me um, so this change to killmonger I think would be a lot more interesting and still would have that same power cap, potentially even a higher power ceiling, but at the expense of you need to build into this card. And I think that is the way tech cards should work. I think this is kind of my crown jewel of the tech cards I redesigned. If I could have gotten everyone kind of hitting this flavor and this build around and the downsides with the upsides, I would have done that. Um, but I, I think this is kind of my crown jewel here. Next up, we've got Shang-Chi. I have two more, two options for Shang-Chi, and that's kind of all we've done for now. Um, maybe we'll do some more other cards in the future if you guys like these kinds of discussions. Uh, for Shang-Chi, uh, we had two different stipulations onto him. This first one is making him a 4-2 and giving him a kind of prerequisite of you have to control at least one other card at each location, and then he gets his normal ability at this location. Uh, that just makes it so that you have to kind of have gone wide a little bit having committed into a little bit of each lane, rather than right now you could just hide Shang-Chi, your opponent plays like an Infinaut in the lane, thinks they have it locked down, play Shang-Chi on turn five, turn six, and you just kind of instantly win the game. And honestly, even in terms of conditions, this is a very minimal condition. One card at each location is not a big ask. It's probably still not even good enough. Um, I think the better option would be this one right here, which is kind of put Shang-Chi on a timer, kind of make him have to charge up his ability. Um, so you'd play him and it would say, next turn, destroy all enemy cards at this location that have nine or more power. So even if your opponent laid down like a Cosmo next turn, uh, Shang-Chi's ability had already triggered, so it won't stop it. The only thing you'd really be able to do would be move your cards out of the way or drop down an armor to protect them. But at least you're getting a turn of head start against Shang-Chi. I don't think this is again the best option i played around with some other options of like give all enemy cards that have nine or more power cut their power in half or something like that couldn't really find a sweet spot and i think the reason why i couldn't find a sweet spot is like i talked about before a lot of these tech cards are necessary at the moment because of the way the game plays out so other balance changes would be necessary uh, so I tried to create this in a vacuum, slightly ignoring how the game exists in its current state, knowing that things would have to change more than just changing the tech cards. Um, but at least this gives your opponent the opportunity to play around it, instead of just everything being this massive surprise blowout and snap. And I know that's kind of just how it works on the ladder right now, uh, but I think we need to dial that 
that knob back a tiny bit and have it be more about, you know, constant back and forth every turn instead of each player just trying to set up a massive surprise on turn six. Um, I just think the games are more interesting when the rest of the turns matter much more instead of who drew their combo that they can hide and play on turn six. Um, and I think tech cards are part of the reason why that exists, um, but they are also part of what holds that in line. So it's kind of an awkward balance. I know it's not a very easy thing to approach with the developers. Um, but yeah, that's what I got for this initial batch of tech cards and changes. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section, either about my redesigns or about the tech card conversation as a whole. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the whole kind of conversation. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.